um, we're currently we're currently about fifty eight of ours. Okay, if one uh, can chase one thousand and two can chase ten thousand. 58 which is how many that's something we need to think about and let me tell you these are not just harsh words they are real words that you can feel and touch this is just give you an introduction of what partnership collaboration can do when you do it alone this phrase is saying when you go it alone the best of you can only get 1,000 outcomes. But when you go in with somebody, the best of both of you can generate 10,000. And let's, let's do the math, math it again. If one person generates 1,000, meaning that singular person will keep 1,000 to himself. That's what it means. If two people chase 10,000, and they even decide that they want to keep to themselves. Please, let me, give me an idea of how much eventually they will keep to themselves on the chat bus. From the mathematical point of view, you know, just mathematics. I would, one would chase 1,000, two would chase 10,000. If all two would get is 10,000, and they decide that, you know what, we're not doing it again. We want to keep to ourselves they will eventually be left with 5,000, which is far, far, 400 times above what an individual can ever do. And this is not my word. I didn't invent this word. It has been there before me and you were born. So it's a, a word that has been tested and trusted. I don't want to take you through how this word emanated. You can, that's why I put uh, a reference point around that word so that you can go back in time and take a look at how it came about. Another one that interests me again is Tower of Babel. Tower of Babel is another space where partnership was shown. But there's something interesting about that partnership, which is one of the things we... We, we do here every time we start. We talk about our vision. We talk about our, our mission. Um, if as one people speaking the same language, this speaking the same language is not literal. It's not like they are speaking, everybody's speaking Yoruba or everybody's speaking Igbo or everybody's speaking Awosa. No, no, that's not what it means. It means their mind, their spirituality, their psychology, their belief, all became one they have begun to do things then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them i don't know how many of us understand what we are doing here and you know we can come here and listen with our physical ears and see with our physical eyes that our psychology and chemistry is not here we're not speaking the same language. One of the reasons why it's taking a lot of time for praise and the team to build this team is to get us to a point where our chemistry, our psychology, our belief system can become the same. As much as people are diversified, you have different opinions, but on the bigger picture of why we're doing what we're doing, we are one. I'm going to round through this introduction because I think I have made my point regarding using these three points. You know what happened with the 12 disciples, 12 disciples who worked as a partner. But there's something I want to drop under the 12 disciples that makes this partnership a very unique one. And then you can decide and decipher on yourself some of the partnerships you have been introduced to. One of the major partnerships I needed to understand and look critically is the church partnership. And I believe that this church partnership came from what happened at the disciples level. If you remember when the Sahindrins showed up to pick Christ, there was something that is a strike exactly. They asked 12 disciples, they could not discover who he is because they all looked alike. Let, let me say it again. 
in, in case you, you missed that out. Twelve disciples, partnering, using the gospel, doing the same work. But when they came to pick Christ, it was difficult to locate him among the twelve. I would like to hear, get an understanding of what, you, what that means from, from a today's point of view. If you are in partnership with people, I remember when praise always talk about you're going to a B, they are showing you their uh, private jet, they are showing you their B cars, they are showing you their first class ticket, they are showing you their first class uh, in the plane, and all of you are going together. The question I'm going to ask you today is, is that the type of partnership I just described here? I want to see what you feel in the chat box to say, oh, if they could not recognize him, what does that bring to mind in the type of partnership they had? They had. Please talk to me. What type of partnership was that? The type they had where they showed up, they could not recognize him. And they were doing things together. They were together. Um, partnership with modeling. Thank you very much. Uh, collaboration is a big thing for us this year. Yeah, um, the partnership that you see that happened here was a partnership that was driven by equity and fair play in today's world. The partnership was driven here was a partnership that was driven by shared responsibility, shared benefits. But you know what we are used to is partnership that is driven by shared responsibility but not shared wealth, equality. Um, at the end of this session, I believe that they were closely knitted, did everything with oneness, closely knitted, did everything with oneness. Let's go into the meat of this session because I've used about 10 minutes to talk about, to open our mind to my understanding of what, the partnership, another great partnership that we have experienced at people is marriage. Marriage is a great partnership that has that two people come together and perhaps they are very productive. They can produce 12 children, who will in turn produce 12, 12 children. And then the 12, 12 children will in turn produce 12, 12 children. Can you imagine how Israel became just from one partnership that were emanated from Jacob? That shows you the power of productivity in partnership. But having said that, this is one area I'm going to spend some time. You know, it's just numbers, but if you look at this number closely, you're going to be wowed by a different partnership that has existed. And let me put it here. Paradventure, you haven't been looking at the equity market of Nigeria. I advise you to go take a keen interest in that space, even though that's one of the areas we're going to be uh, looking at uh, keenly uh, at the cooperative from an investment point of view. But I want to advise you as an individual, uh, spend some time understanding uh, how the capital market in Nigeria, in Canada, in the US, in UK, wherever you are living, work how it works, take a special interest because I can tell you guys that's one of the easiest and easiest possible way of creating clean wealth today in the world because that's one area where partnership is creating momentum, momentum that you have never seen before in the history of stock exchange. Uh, I thought I should drop that now so that uh, is, it forms also part of the assignments that I'll be giving some of us to say, let them not just be the poor coming here to listen and hear and walk away and do nothing about it. Because I can guarantee that you are the one missing out. You spend one hour, two hours listening to what we are doing here and you walk away, you do nothing about it. Uh, that's a wasted two hours. So I'm advising you uh, because these numbers begin to speak uh, more of those volumes or what partnership brings to fall. But this direction is mainly uh, in the world creation uh, point of view. When it comes to 
family systems, what partnership can do. I will leave that to praise and I ought to take care of. But I'm focusing my energy on what partnership can do in your next call of life uh, by changing your generation in a manner that has never been done before. If you look at the things I've posted here, partnership models and firms, um, this is typically a case study um, of what you look at. Dangote Sugar is the most capitalized firm in Nigeria with a 220 billion capital, most capitalized in Nigeria. And if you go a little bit down and let's pick uh, Google, Google is another partnership uh, that has a capitalization of 1.9 trillion. As a matter of fact, there is just one company in the U.S. where if you bring all the capitalization of all the companies in Nigeria, <laughs> guys, you know, sometimes we need, we, we African, we need to really be humble. Do you know that the entire capitalization of Nigerian stock exchange is not up to $1 trillion? The entire capitalization of Nigerian stock exchange is not up to one company in America. But I'm going to tell you one of the reasons why that is going to continue to happen if we don't change the model of partnership that we are used to over time. The same thing goes to MTN. Capitalization is 120 billion. Boasment, 120 billion. UBA. 20 billion. By the way, the owners of UBA have won all the awards in Nigeria in terms of the best run organization, the best profit making organization. They have typically picked all the awards. As a matter of fact, if you have been following King, the award the Illumilu team has been doing, you, you will see that they have done in the last one year, they did close to about 274% ROI in capital. And that's why I'm advising us here today to take a keen interest in what is happening in the capital market in your jurisdiction, wherever you reside. But I'm going to eventually let us know one area that is blowing off the roof in terms of partnership and what they have done. I I'm sure every other time, um, uh, praise is sounding like a a broken record on when it comes to BlackRock. You know, I mean, in one of the meetings we had this week, he came up again, how BlackRock acquired um, Ogunle Caesar uh, airports. I think Gatwick Airport. And we're saying this BlackRock, the way they are going, uh, they probably be acquiring Africa. Because if you look at their capitalization of 9.4 uh, trillion, if you put out in exchange uh, in Africa, we are still not up to BlackRock, one organization. Okay, so let's look at the level of partnership that has happened around this organization. I'm going to take the first one. Uh, let's go to UBA. UBA, which is the list of the partners that has produced a 20 billion capitalization in Nigeria. Let's look at the model of a bank in Nigeria. The model of a bank in Nigeria is saying, I open a bank, I ask customers to come in, but I would have opened a bank using shareholders fund. Shareholders fund of banks, as it were, is about 25 billion. Maybe they have 50, 100 billion. So I raise 100 billion naira and I ask people to come in to, to join me in being my customer, in being my partner, or whatever name you call it, to join me in growing this bank. Okay? So, um, Customers begin to put their money in the bank as deposits, savings deposits, uh, fixed deposit here and there. But let me shock you. One of the things why our partnership, the way we have been taught and learned it over time, is creating more poverty than wealth. When UBA makes profits, I need somebody to also explain this to me, you know, because I am not smart enough to understand it because it breaks my understanding. When UBA makes profit this year, they're probably going to be returning a profit of about 300 billion naira. This profit 
in terms of dividend payout will be shared amongst the owners of the business. Did you get that? These profits, assuming their payout ratio is 50%, meaning if they make 250 billion, they're gonna be paying out 125 billion. This 125 billion will be shared amongst owners of the business. Now, what happened to the people whose money we are used to generate this money? Hello? Did you get my, my question? UBA is going to make 250 billion. It's going to pay our ratio is 50%. 125 billion will be shared. And the only people who will get out of that are people who own the business. We're discussing partnership. What about those customers who, me and you, who kept our money in UBA? The big people who put their money in UBA are savings deposit, current account balances, savings and balances, children's education balances, other balances, because that was the money that was used to generate the 250 billion. What happens to us? You see why there are, there are 20 billion what? Because we're going to show you the difference between that model and another model. Another model of business. Let me go to BlackRock. BlackRock runs at the index fund. Pay attention to this. BlackRock runs what they call an index fund model because an investment bank also diversified portfolio saying, bring your money to us. We're going to use your money to create more wealth. And then people have distributed money to BlackRock. And the entire money people have distributed is 9.4. This is the reason why more people are going to be giving BlackRock money than they will give to UBA because in BlackRock, the major monies, all the monies that they end is distributed according to the size of your contribution in the post. Did you get that? Because an index fund. Small wonder why the size of UBA is 20 billion. The size of BlackRock is 9.4 trillion. I don't, I don't know. I don't have calculator on my hand. I would like somebody to tell me what percentage is that? So if you're sitting down here and you've been running your personal business as your CEO, carrying one bogus card as a managing director CEO, he's run between you and your daughter who is less than 18 years. Nobody's involved in that business. No, you are the one doing, you are the, Managing director, you are the operational manager. Everything, you are the accountant. You are the one that signs check because you want to create all the money for yourself. You see how poor you will eventually become. BlackRock is one model we are trying to emulate because of one single opportunity, shared wealth. Shared wealth. Every money made by BlackRock is distributed to the contributors of the fund proportionately. But every money given to UBA is distributed across board to the owners of the business. Small wonder why they are 20 billion. Why BlackRock is 9.4 trillion today. Remember what I say by when I started. If you want to run fast, go alone. If you want to move far, go with people. And I started again to say one we chase 1,000, two we chase 10,000. Where there is shared responsibility and shared wealth. Don't forget that second one. Because what we are used to is you come to a partnership, they tell you all you will be doing. They say, ah, this cell, this cell, you people are going to be sweeping the, the church on Sunday. 
this other side, you people are going to be manning the gates. This other side, you people are going to be cleaning the toilets. This other side, you people are going to be doing this. They share all the responsibility. But when it comes to sharing the wealth, what happens? It disappears. We now recognize a particular cocoon of people who only share wealth. Why the general leader of the people share responsibility? Let me let me back, let me move a little bit on some of the lessons and some of the case studies a little bit because, like I said, um, one session can never be enough to talk about it. And today I'm trying to be a little bit slower and slower unlike the energy I normally bring to the table so that you can, even if it's two slides I finish, people would have gathered from that two slides. Let's, let's, let's look at partnership that I have seen and what are the lessons that I have learned. There are qualities or things that you must consider before going into a partnership. You know, every time I hear people say, what are you bringing to the table? What are you bringing to the table? I mean, this is a a language, an acronym, everybody understands. But in partnership, that what are you bring the table is actually the last thing to consider. The first thing to consider in partnership is who am I going into partnership with? Who? Before we ask, what is he bringing to the table? Who? Who is he? Can we track his 10-year life? Where has he been doing? What has he done in the last 15 years? Where did he work? For instance, if everybody here who has gotten involved in businesses with people that failed, took time to request for the CV of the promoters of this business, one by one, and say, I want to read their CV first before I know what I join. Imagine going to a session where they are having one of those big time sections. And then everybody, they say, uh, what question do you have? And it's okay, I have enjoyed this session. I've seen how you guys have traveled the world. I've seen how you people have bought the best cars in the world. I want to do the same thing, but I want to see uh, the promoters, five of you. Please, can you forward to me your CVs in the last 20 years? I can bet you guys, none of you would have lost a dime once you read the CV. Because you will see a misalignment between what they are promoting and what they are or who they are or what they have done in the last 20 years, in the last 15 years. So the first question you need to ask yourself when every time people want to go into partnership with you with you is, who are they? Can we secularize the profile of these people we are dealing with? Before you exchange your cash, first exchange profile. If you know you don't even understand how to read profile, send it to one of your friends who understand profiling. Read their profile. Check who they are. What have they done? Because you know what you have? Fly by night superstars all around. Three years ago, he was jobless. This year, he's driving Range Rover. Come on, something is not adding up. Five years ago, he was flagging the street, doing nothing. He has not developed himself in any way. After five years, he's now a cryptocurrency guru. He has developed the algorithm of how to deal on crypto. He is now a mega cryptocurrency man. He's asking you to come and join what they are doing. Profile zero. Who first, before you ask, what is it bringing into the table? Another lesson is specialization in partnership. I have been intrigued by real estate over and continues to wow me to you today. And that's where I see partnership that works like magic. What do I mean? The day you decide to build your house, the man who is going to come to do the foundation of the house will finish foundation and he will go home. 
because he's a specialized in doing foundation. The man who will come to do blinding, you may not notice because there are different levels of bricklayer. They call all of them bricklayer, but they are specialized. There's a man who is going to show up. He's a bricklayer in doing blinding of the foundation. There is another set of bricklayers. All they do is block laying. When they lay the block, you don't need to plaster because that's all they've been doing in the last 20 years of their life, laying blocks for foundation. Do you know that the man who lays the block is not the man who will do the plastering of the house? Different people. The man who will do the plaster of the house is not the man you're going to enjoy bring to do roofing. You have somebody who will do roofing. The roofing is just nogging. Nogging means putting all the wood together on the roof. When he's done, he will carry his kayak and go home. He doesn't know how to put the zinc. The new man who will show up is the man who will bring zinc. It's only when that is completed, you now behold the beauty of real estate. But let me show what some of the partnership we have been experiencing is. They are calling into a partnership. The man is the CEO. He's also the accountant. He's the one that knows who will pay. He's the one that carries check all around. He's also in the, if you call strategy meeting, he's there, he will show up. If you want to discuss sales and marketing, you'll be shocked that he'll be number one to show up again. Now, the question you're going to ask yourself when you walk into that space and you do not see diversified knowledge, diversified areas of interest. That's something Prince always say, which I, I enjoy his humility when he says that. Is the fact that he says, ah, when it comes to money, please, I'm not there. And he's bold to talk about it all the time. So ah, when it comes to how to manage his money, count me out. I'm not there. It's not my area. <laughs> Meanwhile, does it make sense to you that a man gathers people together, puts money together? When it comes to distributing the money, he leaves the room and leaves the people to share the money. Is that the type of partnership you're used to? We have been embroiled with a lot of partnership model where the promoter does everything because he doesn't trust anybody. doesn't trust anybody. There's no trust reading in that. Okay? Now, let's go to the structure of partnership. The structure of partnership was going to show you in my next slide, you know, structure of partnership. Structure of partnership shows you who does what. Let me go back. Let me go to that to show you something. This partnership. If you look at this partnership, can you see this slide? Nike. Confirm if you can see this slide. Yes. Thank you very much. This is another partnership I want you to look at. Nike is something you know. I mean, you know very well about these products. It's a product that I love. They have done well in footwear and sportwear. But look at one of the things they do. Sierra Williams becomes a brand of Nike. That's all she does. Walmart becomes the distribution channel. That's what Walmart does. The day Serena shows up wearing Nike and using it to play, she goes home. She's not interested in how it's going to be sold because another company who is Walmart takes over distribution channel. But before we get to that, we have a company called Just Do It who does production. And then you have the media who talks about it. And maybe if you're in America, you hear a lot about QVC who talks about this product in the QVC channel and then people are buying and ordering. And then you have the public space customers who walk into all those places to buy. This is what a partnership picture looks like so every time you go into a discussion and we are talking about partnership make way to ask these questions who is doing this who is doing that who is doing that anytime you see a partnership model that is confluence in a particular direction it means the model is a partnership model that will fail what is Lego framework? Lego framework is what are we going to put together? That's something we're working together. Currently, we are spending a lot of time on the Lego framework. What is the structure? What kind of organization do we require for this particular thing we want to do? There are so many of us sitting down here listening to me. They've never read any document for investment in their life. It's all about where do I sign? 
many years ago, I used to be that because uh, the documents can be very long. The documents can be uh, fine prints, but the legal framework is actually what determines what will happen in that partnership. A lot of us don't make our time to read them, or even when we make our time to read them, we'll read first page, last page, and then we we'll sign. We don't understand the legal framework. So every partnership must come with a strong lever from where you do not understand that. It'd be nice to have a partner outside that partner who will read the legal framework and interpret it for you. I can't stop talking about risk management framework. Every partnership must show you what can go wrong. Let me give you an instance. What can go wrong? There is no watertight transaction, none. There is no watertight partnership, none. As a young banker very many, very many years ago, I was going to give money to a customer for a transaction that was seemingly a watertight, as it were. I mean, the risk department has completed, everybody has signed off. And I was in the treasury side of things. Treasury is the man who is going to release the money. So I was invited for a meeting to look at what kind of, how do we mitigate all the risks? The first risk we saw was one key man risk. That was the first risk I noticed. I noticed, take, take a keen understanding of what I'm saying, because a lot of the things we are involved in today has a key man risk. Where you have not closed it, is there a plan to close it? It is very important. Yeah, I know sometimes we can trust and trust and trust, but shit happens, guys. So I show up in that meeting and I say, okay, uh, sir, we understand what you're doing. We like what you're doing. Uh, what happens if you sleep this night and not wake up? Uh -uh. What kind of question is that? Guys, as stupid as that question is, is a question you really need to ask yourself when you hear about partnership. What happens to this partnership if the key man in this partnership is no more? What happens? Do we, have we put in place a succession plan under the case studies? You see the slide. Uh, when the guy is not around, is there anybody in that partner who sits in? Or the guy is the alpha and omega of that. I don't want to. I don't want to talk about uh, uh, that because if we start that discussion, we will not end. Somebody said there is no uh, no absolute trust. The guy is sitting down there. He doesn't trust anybody. I'm sure you guys heard what happened when a certain governor lost his life recently. What happened preceding his death? What happened? We, we were in this country where we had a president who was. We believe he was even dead, even before they told us. But there was no plan for anybody. And there was a quagmire in that entire process. There was no plan to put anybody. There was no plan for any second person because I couldn't actually concern is our town, is our church, is our business, is our family business. Nobody must come in. So there's no succession plan of any sort. So one of the things you need to look at for is when the promoter is not available in a partnership, who takes charge? Who is as good as the promoter in that partnership? If you cannot find, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying, can that, can you put it in place? If over a long period of time, it's not been put in place, guys, it's time to say, shake hands and say goodbye. It's very, very key and important that you understand that. Having done the legal framework, having done the risk management framework, who will put his legs in when the promoter it's not there. Begin with the end in mind. Where, why are we doing this, really? What is the essence of what we're doing? This thing we are coming together to come and achieve is hope for what to happen. Because if you analyze businesses, a lot of businesses from that standpoint, there are so many businesses you have no business getting yourself involved because the only thing they want to do in that business is make paltry money. And then you lose all your sleep. You lose the time with your family. You lose quality time. At the end of the day, your life is not changing. Your life has not changed. So the question is, why did you get involved in this in the first place? Can somebody show you the picture of why we're doing this? So every 
partnership must come with this is the end game the end game is maybe okay let me take it for instance uh, our cooperative i can tell you here the cooperative end game is to see how we can become financially free and retire better than our parents did that's just one of them another aspect i can see is in the cooperative is we want to see how we can be valuable to our environment by the things we do by the level of profit we make can we adopt a school at some point can we adopt modelized babies home at some point that that begins to make sense to say there is a bigger better understanding of why i'm doing this so for every partnership you must answer that question what is the what is the end game why am i doing what i'm doing begin with the end in mind is this profit or non-profit thing we are doing you know <laughs> Uh, me and you know some high level of non-profit transaction that is available in Africa today that have become profitable to the families who started it. Yes, it is supposed to be non-profit. The question is, is that what you want to do? Partnership is number one game for leverage. I, I will not dwell here again because I'm rounding up because it's supposed to be a one-hour class. I'm rounding up. Leverage. 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 Leverage means one only you can carry this. But when you join people together under a mastermind program, that's one area that a lot of us are, are missing it. I know we have a lot of people in this class right now who are running their personal businesses. I have an advice for you when it comes to leverage and compounding. When you wake up 1 a.m. as a business owner, because business owners don't sleep a lot. They wake up odd hours to think, I don't know. I mean, a couple of times, praise has sent me messages as to, hey, I'm wondering why you say awake. I may be asking myself, too, why am I awake? Am I responding to this message at 2 a.m., 1 a.m.? The question I'm going to ask you is, when you wake up at 1 a.m., is there anybody in your team who is also awake at 1 a.m. with you? Try it. You run a business, you're the CEO, you're the managing director, you're the chairman, you're the global chairman of that company. And then you come to every meeting, you say, our company, we, our company, because that's one of the scam of a lot of businesses today in, in Nigeria. You say Some people even come themselves family. Uh, welcome to the, this family. Uh, or since we've been using UBA as an example, you say, uh, welcome to our UBA family. Uh, welcome to this uh, family. They will shake hands. Uh, welcome to this family. This family is only a responsibility. There is no other thing family around it. It's only in the job. After the job, a few people gather together to share the boot or to share the profit. There's no such, does not exist. So the question for me in looking at the leverage point of view is when you wake up in one at 1 a.m. to think about the business, to think about the vision of the business, to think about the direction you're going in 2024, to think about what is your plan for this year, who in that partnership is also say I work with you? Is there anybody in that partnership who's awake with you? Or is this something you're doing alone? Maybe that's a way to test whether you have partnership or not. Are you thinking alone? I don't know how many of you have been in a meeting where we are called for a management meeting. And I don't know your experience to where you have worked. Uh, we are here for management meeting or strategy session. This meeting is going to last for two hours. In that two hours, one hour, 45 minutes, one person is the one talking. <laughs> I don't know whether you have had that experience before. I have had tons of that experience. And then you ask yourself, is this a mastermind? Or is it just a meeting to tell us what we should be doing because you have thought it through yourself. There are no uh, idea from us. We're not allowed to bring our ideas. If you are involved in such organization, you better start looking for somewhere else because that will not make any more difference in your life. <laughs> Partnership is about like what I described to you early. earlier. They showed up to pick Christ. They did not differentiate. Meaning the swag was the same. They probably were in the same standard. They probably came with the same zilabia. They probably wore the same kind of papa's cap. If there was glasses, their glasses was also looking like the same. But let me shock you. If they all came in a car, let me assume that they all came in a Range Rover spot. Okay. What it means is that when they all came out to enter their car, they were all driving Range Rover spot. Think about it. 
when they say they could not recognize it, it's not, it's not something you just take from a fixed value. Partnership. It's not, it's not a discussion to say oh, they were looking for him. No. They sounded the same. They were like the same. They were all swinging their khakis, the same. I don't know if you get what I'm talking about here, guys. I, I, I can I can't say about this for the next two weeks. Partnership in a mastermind position must showcase high level of equity and equality. We're only going to have a captain in that space, not because he's the greatest, but because somebody must be on the driver's seat. And when he steps away, the next man in command must show up. That's what I'm talking about. And that's what you will see that is personified in BlackRock organization. Try to Google the people behind BlackRock. Just try Everybody who is an investor in BlackRock is a partner in BlackRock. That is why when they make money in BlackRock, everybody gets his own share proportionately. I'm beginning to round up um, so that I, I don't uh, I, I get us to get begin to choose some of the things I've mentioned. Under the case studies, I've talked about the public quoted companies. I've mentioned examples, public quoted company in Africa and some of the public quoted company outside. I've showed you different. The different is what we call partnership in Africa. It's not partnership. It's people gathering together to serve the interest of humans. That's what they call partnership. Small wonder why they are so small. Why, in terms of percentage, I'm not pretty sure they're up to 1% of where partnership is practiced. You know, we have talked about the Jews, the Jews, the Jews. I, I don't want to bore you. Take our time, understand. You know, these guys have, have demystified partnership in a manner that, that, that is beyond human understanding. I mean, I was talking to, I think it was also President Van Gruber. I said, they don't even go to court because when they shake hands together and agree on something, they know it's done. They don't, they don't need a lawyer to sign it. That's, that's the bedrock of partnership. But some of the partnerships were involved. People come in partnership, take money from you, one year, two years. They can't even pick your call anymore. And then you open the Facebook, you see they have started another one, that you're no more there. And they're already snapping all the pictures all over the world. And you were doing something with this same person two years ago. Some of them take your money. They can't even call you anymore. Some of them take your money. They won't. You don't even know what they're doing anymore. Come on. Enough is enough. We can't keep slaving your life. Who work so hard and hand over to so few goons who has portrayed themselves to be, to be, to be the ones that are no. Let, let me let me let me tell us something. I know I, this is outside this class, but I'm 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 led to say it. Please, I'm, I'm talking to somebody here. Enough of worshipping people in Nigeria. Enough. Enough of relating with people in that space because of what, how they show up. Enough. Because let me tell you, the broker, they look, the broker, they are. Enough. Enough, enough of looking down on people who you think they're not doing much because that is probably where the indwelling of, of the meat of what you're looking for is enough enough for joining people in business because of how they look what they brought how they appeared enough because i can tell you 10 over 10 of the scam in partnership has been driven by those fakeness in our system. Enough. Uh, I'm running up now and, and I'm gonna ask you to um, look, take a keen look at BlackRock again on the model and your personal, personal 
personally, uh, check what the index funds are currently doing all over the world. Uh, we have an index fund in Nigeria. We have an index fund in America. We have quite a lot of them in, in, in India. We have them in UK. Take our time, understand what that is, because that is embodiment of what partnership means and personifies. What, what am I talking about? This is a place where people come together, contribute money for a purpose, and whatever they make, they share it proportionally. That's the definition of partnership in it index fund and that's exactly the type of partnership that i want each and every one of us to begin to be interested in i've given that example in capital market i've spoken about church model i mean in this class i've told you about church south africa baptist church where people start uh forms part of their investment form part of their insurance forms part of uh, uh, because burial is very, the very expensive in South Africa. A portion of your uh, offerings and tithes are used to acquire uh, burial insurance for the the man of the house, whether you like it or not. And they are doing this with quite a number of uh, asset managers. One of them is Sun Lam, uh, and and. and small wonder that's one of the biggest churches there because that is what I call partnership, shared wealth. Shared responsibility. Um, share with an upside is one thing I'm you know, gonna I'm not gonna be tired talking about every partnership that does not uh embed share wealth inside of it is it, not a partnership, it is is a slavery relationship. Slavery relationship, like I said, the example I gave you, the bank brings people in, takes their deposits, current account, savings account, they make profit, the owners share the money. The people who brought the money to make the money do not get a portion of that. That's inequality. And I think that's one thing me and you must begin to think about. How do we create a banking structure, a banking system in our generation where everybody is involved in the shared world. That's one assignment I need to drop here before I leave today. Think about it. If in all the bank relationship you have, at the end of the year, when they are sharing dividends, you receive a portion based on how much you left in the account between this time and this time. And I can bet you the level of poverty in Africa we reduce even number of contributions we have in our churches is treated in that same manner. The level of poverty we reduce. My question is, why are we not doing it? That was a discussion for another day. Guys, in conclusion, which is what I've been saying again, if you desire to go very fast, go alone. But if you want to go far with people where you reduce the level of dependency among ourselves, which is not a hallmark of partnership. The hallmark of partnership is interdependency. My conclusion in partnerships, check your body, check your body system. You see the level of partnership going on in your partner system. Check your body. That is the number one partnership you must understand. Your body, your body mechanism, the head, the leg, the lap, the stomach, everybody is working. When it comes to eating, the stomach and the hand takes their shape. When it comes to moving the leg, takes its responsibility. But when it comes to benefits, everybody in the body system benefits. Nobody is left behind. So every partnership that you cannot picture, like your body, a debt partnership. I don't want us to be involved in debt partnership. I want us to be in a thriving partnership, growing partnership, so that next five years, we could have seen where we're coming from and where we are and where we are going. If I cannot give you that picture or experience that picture with you as a partner, what I have is not partnership. What I have is slavery. And I'm going to go be part of that slavery mentality. Thank you very much, guys. I think I'm done for the day. Thank you, praise. Hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Chief. Uh, 
you can stop sharing. <laughs> Thank you. Please, I want to see in the comment what you want to say to 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 our presenter for today. It's a topic that I don't know. I feel like I can't, I can't get enough of this topic. But I also find that in listening, I'm still not sure what my solution will be. I mean, I have a business that I'm starting now on a crash and um, a family wants to be part of it and they want to invest money. I'm thinking, I'm just knowing you people. I'm just knowing you people to be part of this. You want to be a shareholder. You want to be a partner. Even if I say yes, it's a bit of a challenge for me to know the logistics that will help us to keep sharing the profits for however, however. So, <laughs> Chief, is there something you can tell us there? Because I, I can imagine that there are some people in this uh, audience wondering how they can even get into partnership, supposing they see somebody that they trust. How, who should they meet and how are they going to make that kind of agreement? Who are the people involved that can help them make like a legal agreement? And how will they keep, how will they know who must get which quantity? So long as that business is happening, you know? Is there something you can say there, Chief? Okay, please unmute him. Admin, please unmute him. I think you should be able to unmute. Okay. Okay. I think I'm in now. Uh, Jideka, uh, thank you very much for that question. Is like, say, if you look at my slide, you look at the legal framework. That's one area a lot of people who run businesses, um, they pay little attention to. Don't do the work you're not factored to do. Don't try to do it. You know, uh, when you run a business, one of the things that I say, a lot of people start business, they do everything. They do all manner of stuff. You know, like I said, the body, the body, the body, check out, check out, check out the body. The body makes a whole, this is an organism, organization, okay? But the hand will do what the hand will do. The leg will do what the leg will do. The tummy will do what the tummy will do. So this question you're asking is a lawyer's question. It's very simple. You know, when, when a man who does not understand arithmetic see calculus it would be like saying a uh, magic that they do okay so don't bother your head with that at this point in time in your life you don't want to learn new things focus on the things you're really perfect and it's expand where you're good at that's what i tell people today don't try to learn new things there are certain things that somebody says, ah, you don't even know how to use uh, youtube to make money you don't need to learn how to use youtube to, to make money there are people out there you can pay stipend and you will send them the content they will give you the best of the best that's the specialization I'm talking about. Try and work with people who know the best way to do it. It will cost you some money. Let me tell you. A man buys a house, 500 million, and he refuses to use 1 million to do insurance. That's stupidity of the highest order. If you're going to create a business today that you're looking, that will be worth 400,000 rand. And you're not willing to pay somebody 2,500 rand as a lawyer to put the structure together. Then you have not started thinking like a businesswoman. Okay? The thought pattern starts by the structure. If you get a structure wrong, the partnership will fail. The structure, like I said, in building business, you must get somebody who understands how to do the foundation, how to do blinding. That's when the building will stand. If you miss it in the structure, a partnership will disappear. These same people who are family members, you know, it's the only money they make family members scatter table. Money matter. They know they need family for that one. So you better get the structure right by getting a lawyer. Today, there are so many lawyers out there. You can actually list a lawyer online. You don't have to see the people. You tell them what you want them to. They create a structure, create all the things, send it back to you. You don't even need to see anybody. I don't, I'm sure that happens in South Africa because that happens a lot in America here. So it happens everywhere in the world. You don't need to call anybody together. Just give them the platform what you want to do. They will create it, create a structure, define, create even the documentations for you and then forward everything for you. Okay. I hope I'll Thank be able to answer so that much. question. Thank yeah. you. My yard people, I hope so. And I don't hear oh, this is how we're going to do it. Thank you so much, Chief. Please, let's take some questions. 
let's take some questions. Who wants to ask any question? I've not seen any question in the chat box. Um, is it that we know everything we are ready now, or do we have some questions? Please, let's take some questions. Feel free to write in the chat box, or I can actually um have you on mute and speak to Chief before he goes. This Who's is Chief. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chief now. That's your area. Yeah, yeah, Chief of the Finance. <laughs> and many oh more. My God. <laughs> okay, house. Are we quiet? Are we so quiet? Um, I, I have a question. And okay. uh, uh, how, how do you how do you advise people deal with fear? Especially we live in Nigeria, which is a religious society, and you are literally blackmailed um, and threatened that maybe God is going to kill you or something. Um, I'm sure you, many of us here have seen the videos early in the year of someone who came out and said that um, people's um, first, first um, fruit is his own, that they should give it to him. I mean, it was very blunt and brazen about it. Um, and so, and I, I, I mean, I was trying to, I didn't know the man until that time. Then my friend said to me that he had a meeting in Abuja the following week and the place was packed, right? And so we began to analyze this in a group and we felt, oh, a lot of people are fear driven, right? Um, give to God, give to God, give to God. And many people have become very broke that way. Um, and I always say to people that, um, in the first 20 years of Bill Gates building Microsoft, we didn't hear so much about his giving, 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 the way he does right now. So off my head, it looks to me like he built wealth sustainably to a place where he could give for the rest of his life. And um, that, that was what he did. Now, what is your advice for people like that who are in fear, in that they think that, oh, you know, God is out to kill me. Um, you know, I, I have to give to God. And there is nothing, I mean, I give to God's work. Um, well, depending again on what we define as God's work. Um, I, I love to give to whatever improves God's kingdom, you know. But how how do you advise? Because a lot of people are here right now, um, they are under that fear, right? Um, you know, so how do you, especially given the fact that many people have lost a lot of wealth because they have given all kinds of giving that um, has not produced um, the desired result. Hmm. Uh, praise. Um, I, I, I want to first apologize to anybody who um, may not like what I'm going to say, but I apologize ahead of time. Um, I have a strong background in that stuff. And I can tell you the opium that is driven all those is um, a capsule called fear, like you said. And it has become a product or a product line. And one of the major things finding the amber of fear is ignorance. Um, ignorance is what fans the amber of fear. Another thing that fans the amber of what people are doing is greed. Um, the greed has turned because Lou, if you stay in that session where that guy is talking, the last portion of that discussion will be what will happen to you in terms of what you will gain or who you will, what you produce if you do it and who you will become if you don't do it. So you see two things here going on here. You know, Anthony Robin will call it uh, pain and pleasure. That's what drives the metrics of religion, pain and pleasure. What will happen to you if you don't do it? That is fair how you have bountiful blessing this year if you do it. Great. So they have turned the entire session like uh, Naira Bet. I mean, it's become what it is. So my discussion with people is go on your own. Look at that book the man is using to express this to you. Can you on your own do your own research? I don't want to mention anything. I don't want to say go and read your Bible well. Mm. Can you just go and get knowledge? Because knowledge is what messes up all these ignorant discussions and ignorant exposition. Because I can tell you, 90% of people who gather to listen to church men never on their own do their personal research or never on their own do their own personal research. So how can you walk away from there? If you're ignorant, you will be glued. If you're knowledgeable, 
you will look at that, you just smile and then um, shake your heads because ignorance is falling down. Praise. That's the much I can say so that I don't spend a lot of time here to say people who are doing that, um, it's just creating more poverty mentality among our people. Uh, how many years ago have we been doing that? Praise. Remember, how many years ago have we been doing here? Yet, Nigeria remains the, cap the poverty capital of, of, of the world to date. So what does it mean? It means that strategy has failed. It has completely failed because every promises that was made in the last 20 years to the people never manifested. Go to those places, they are still in penal. So what happened to the, what the people said like 20 years ago, 15 years ago, 10 years ago? Never happened. So it's not going to happen in the next 10 years to come. For me, I don't want to use the word scam, but it seemed to be like that. Okay. Thank you so, so much. Is there any other person who would like to ask any questions? Thank you. I do not see any question in the chat box. I will assume that we are all processing yeah. the weight of information and wondering um, how we can take the first step forward. I hope that we'll go uh, we'll get wisdom, go we'll get knowledge, like he said, so that we are not beaten like all the stories that make us afraid. I hope that we will also know that we cannot do everything. So you focus on your areas of specialty and pay for the ones that you cannot do for yourself. So this has been quite informative and quite inspiring. And we hope that we can be able to do a lot of collaborations this year, partnerships this year, because we want to go far. We don't want to go fast. We want to go far, right? Please, I want to see in the comment session, what do you think about today's session? We're about to finish. What can you say to Chief before he leaves? Can we say thank you, Yemi? Can we say thank you to, to, to <laughs> Oga God's will? Can we say thank you to him? Please put your fire emojis. Let him see that we enjoyed today's session. I don't see anybody. Uh, am I alone in this room? Where are our people? Who, are they using hand to eat rice? Aha. Uh -huh. Echo, thank you. Star, thank you. Yes, bring it on. Bring it on. Okay, Godswill, I hope you are seeing our people are grateful. This is a big weight. You know, it's a big weight because it's something that you will learn, but even to implement it, you still need a bit of <laughs> prayers, if I can say that. But I hope that we'll be able to um, generate good partnerships that will propel us forward. We can start by even getting involved with the cooperative and see how we learn how to trust and keep going on. Thank you. What a session we have come to almost the end of it. Before we end, <laughs> those people that I promised a song, where 